Hi everyone, this video is going to be covering your electron configurations homework and you're going to need your notes, your homework, which you'll do in your um, notebook, and you'll want your periodic table probably, but definitely in your notes you want the electron filling rules. Um, you don't necessarily need this, but I'll refer to it a little bit. This is probably the most important thing you'll need from your notes is the order of energy levels, so make sure you have that copied down. Uh, primarily this written out. So to do electron configurations, we need to follow our electron filling rules. These are the three rules we're going to follow. The Aufbau principle says that we need to follow the order of energy levels, start from the lowest before we move up. Then we have the Pauli exclusion principle, which says we can only have a maximum of two electrons in any one orbital. And the Hund's rule then tells us how we would fill up orbitals in a sublevel. We need to put one in each before we're allowed to double up. That will become important when we try to figure out how many unpaired electrons are in a given atom. And that is part of your homework for this assignment. So we're going to do a couple questions from this. And we're going to follow these steps. And we're going to use this to help us as well. So we're just going to jump right into it starting with, we're going to start with lithium. So you have an example to look at, you'll do calcium, um, or you can wait to do calcium. And we're going to start with lithium, it's a nice easy one. And it gives you the name of the element, the symbol, and it also gives you the atomic number in case you're having a hard time finding it on the periodic table. Uh, but also, it's really nice that it gives you the atomic number, because remember, since these are all neutral, that means that the number of electrons will be the same as the, the atomic number, or the number of protons. So for step one, for determining the number of electrons in the element or ion, we have all neutral elements here. Um, so the number of electrons is always going to be the same as this atomic number. So for lithium, we know that we have, I'm just going to make a little note, we have three electrons to place. And we're going to follow our rules and fill from the lowest energy level first. So the best thing probably for you to do at this point, there is another method that uses the periodic table, which is the method I prefer, and there's a video on that if you want to check that out. And um, if you're not ready for that yet, this is a really simple method. You have to have this order of sublevels written out somewhere so that you can follow. And this order follows the order of this diagram here of the energy levels. It's just written in a nice way that you can clearly see which sublevel comes first. So what this means is we're going to start with 1s, then we would move to 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p. So we're going to do that, but we're going to put the correct number of electrons in each of these sublevels. So I'm always going to start with 1s. So for lithium, I'm going to start with 1s. And remember, since it's an S sublevel, it can hold two electrons maximum. So in this case, I do want to put two electrons here because I have three total electrons to place. I can't put three there because the S can only hold two. So I'm done with the one S, and then I would move on to the next sublevel, which is two S. So I'll go ahead and write two S right next to what I just wrote, no spaces. And remember, you write the number of electrons as the superscript. So now the 2s sublevel can also hold two electrons. However, I only want to put one. And the reason I only want to put one is because I only have three electrons to place. And remember, the superscripts here represent how many electrons you've used. So right now I've used two plus one. I've used three electrons, and that's all I have. So now I would stop. So that's actually the complete electron configuration for lithium. Then I would answer the number of unpaired. One way you can do that, the easiest way, is to draw out the orbital diagram for the last little piece of electron configuration. So since we ended with an S sublevel, I know that it's going to look like this. So I'm going to label it 2S because I ended with 2S here. And I know it will just have one orbital because of my notes here. And in that orbital, I only had one electron. So I'm going to put one slash there. And from that picture, I can see that I have one unpaired electron. All right, so we'll go through and you'll see some different answers you might be able to get there for the unpaired. So that's lithium. Let's move on to argon. And remember, you can rewind and, and rewatch that if you want to see that again. So for argon, again, we have 18 electrons because it's atomic number 18. So 
I'm just going to remind myself that I have 18 electrons to use. We're going to follow the same process. So we're going to start here and move our way this way until we run out of electrons. So I'm going to start with 1s. See, I'll move it up so we can see both. So I'm going to start with 1s. And I'll put two electrons there. And I'll then go to 2s. And I'm going to go ahead and put all two electrons there because remember I'm trying to get to 18, so I have a little ways to go. Then we move on to 2p. Now remember a p sublevel is a little bit different. The p sublevel has three orbitals, so we can hold up to six electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and put six electrons in there because I'm trying to get to 18. Right? So at this point I have two plus two plus six, so I have 10 electrons so far. I need to keep going. So I'll go to 3s next. And since that's an s, it can hold two electrons. So now I'm at 12 electrons so far. Got to keep going to get to 18. Next we have 3p. Another p sublevel, so it can hold six electrons. All right, and let's double check that we put the right amount of electrons there. So we have two plus two plus six is 10, plus two is 12, plus six is 18. So it's actually good, I put a six there, it gets me to 18. If you had say 17 electrons, you would only put three P five here. But we're trying to get to 18 and now we add up our electrons and it gets us to 18, so that's where we stop. So that would be the complete electron configuration for argon. That brings us to the unpaired question here. So remember the way we do that is we draw out the last little piece of electron configuration, this 3p6. So I'm gonna say 3p, and then I'll check my notes. Just to double check, the p sublevel has three orbitals. So I'm gonna draw three circles to represent my three orbitals. And then I need six electrons. Based on our electron configuration, I need to put six electrons in there. But remember, Hund's rule states that we want to put one electron in each orbital before a second is added. So the way you draw your slashes in here, your electrons, does matter. And here you will say it doesn't matter, but we'll do another example where it does. So when you count to six, you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So you want to put one in each before you double up. And now from that picture I can see that I have zero unpaired. All of them have a buddy. All right, so zero unpaired electrons for that one. And this question will become more important when we talk about chemical reactions. All right, we're going to do one more iron, number 26. So we have, let me fold this here easier to write on. So we have iron number 26, and we'll put that up so we can see. All right, so same thing. We're going to start with 1s, and we'll put two electrons there. So we're here. We have 26 electrons to use. Then we go to 2s. We'll put two electrons there. Then we go to 2p. Put six electrons there. Then we go to 3s, and we can put two electrons there. Then we go to 3p, we can put six electrons there. And actually at this point I know we're at 18 because we just did argon, which got us up to 18, and that was that point. So I do have to keep going, so the next one would be 4s, so since it's an s sublevel it can hold two, so 4s2. Then we go to the next one, and remember, now I'm at 20, so I only need six electrons more. So we go to 3D, it's our first D sublevel, so let's see how many electrons the D sublevel can hold. There are five orbitals in the D sublevel, so it can hold 10 electrons, but we don't want to put 10. We only need six more, so we're going to put 3D6 would be the end of our electron configuration. We add those up, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 equals 26. You can use your calculator to, do, calculator to do that or you can do some mental math, but just always verify that your superscripts, which represent your electrons, add up to the number of electrons you have. 
And then for our unpaired, we're going to draw the last part, which is 3D6. All right, so we know that the 3D sublevel has five orbitals, so I'm going to draw five orbitals here. And then we want to put six electrons into those five orbitals, but remember we need to follow Hun's rule. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so make sure you fill it in according to Hun's rule to get the correct answer that there are four, one, two, three, four unpaired electrons. All right, so that's just a few examples from your homework. You just have a few more to do on your own. Good luck, follow this and use your notes, use this written out version. And again, if you wanna check out the periodic table method, you can watch that tutorial video.